Some businesses, some of them, are backing away, walking away from President Trump after those comments yesterday about Charlottesville. We have five CEOs who've left the Manufacturing Council. There they are. That would be uh, Krasanik, Musk, Frozier, Plank, and Paul. Three CEOs left the Strategy and Policy Forum. They are Iger, Musk, and Kalanick. President Trump responded to this news of people leaving the Business Council. He responded at yesterday's press conference. Roll tape. Some of the folks that will leave, they're leaving out of embarrassment because they make their products outside. And I've been lecturing them, including the gentleman that you're referring to, about you have to bring it back to this country. You can't do it necessarily in Ireland and all of these other places. You have to bring this work back to this country. That's what I want. I want manufacturing to be back into the United States so that American workers can benefit. That's the president's answer to businesses walking away from his presidency. This lady is Martha McCallum, host of The Story on Fox News. CEOs, some of them, walking away. Some GOP members walking away. The president needs the GOP to do anything in Congress. What's the status here? Well, you know, I think some of what the president said there is absolutely true in terms of the reasons that they're pulling away. There's a social conscious factor that has crept into corporate America that really didn't used to be there before. So they're feeling that they need to make these political statements and Twitter and social media and all of that have fed into the reasoning behind those decisions on their part. However, you know, everything that you were just discussing and the infrastructure, I mean, I was sitting at my computer last night writing the top of our show. And, you know, initially when the president came out yesterday, we're putting in sound bites about about the flow structure of how difficult it is to get infrastructure happening, um, how he wants to decrease that. He stepped all over that message by, you know, sort of indulging, I would say, in this argument that he is fighting because he's not happy with the response to his comments over Charlottesville. So if he wants his agenda to move forward, if he doesn't want to give Republicans and CEOs reasons to take everyone in the country off message, he needs discipline. You could see General Kelly, his new chief of staff standing off to the side during that announcement yesterday looking down because clearly he wanted the president to walk out there not take questions stick to the agenda and try to move the country forward on the things he wants to work on and clearly that isn't what happened yesterday all right martha i've still got peter right here if he doesn't have the gop in lockstep with him then he doesn't get his growth agenda does he I'm, I'm afraid I have to agree with everything you said martha that when you look at when ronald reagan imposed those tax changes it was the sixth year of his presidency, and he had accomplished a lot already. He was laser-focused on tax reform at that time. He didn't have distractions. Donald Trump, the president, is creating distractions for himself. These are self-inflicted wounds. Imagine poor Elaine Chao had to give a presentation to the press after that press conference yesterday. She made her pitch for infrastructure. I agree. That it was a phenomenal pitch. If you look at several chapters of my book, all saying build our infrastructure. That's the way you build back growth. It is a multiplier effect. He lost that message, frankly, in litigating what he said in the early part of the weekend when he got it right on Monday. He didn't need to reopen the case. Mm. He had turned the attention to a fresh, new, important chapter. That's the kind of discipline and focus. I agree. He needs that to carry the country forward. Next case. The government's bean counters, otherwise known as the CBO, they say that Obamacare premiums will go up 20% next year if President Trump ends payments to insurers. Now there's a threat because we have Obamacare collapsing and unless the president bails out the insurance companies, it collapses even more and the Republican Party gets the blame. That's a difficult position, isn't it? I mean, it, the, the federal government has decided that they are going to cover this cost of health care, whether it comes in the form of backing up the insurance companies or giving subsidies to the people who have to buy that coverage themselves. Um, and, and so now it becomes a CBO exercise in which side is the government going to give their money to and which side will put us in a position where we, we have to dole out less. OK, you know, then you've got Bernie Sanders on the other side, yes. basically saying yep. that he wants to head towards a single payer plan. He knows it's going to take time because Republicans are in control of Congress right now. But that's his plan. The government is in the health care business. That's what we learned when this vote went down uh, in the last round. And it did remind me in reading about this this morning of what Rand Paul proposed. He said, look, this is not a market friendly alternative. 
patching and band-aiding Obamacare as it is will only end up costing the government a lot more, and I think that's what we're seeing here. But you can't get 50 votes for Rand Paul's solution, a no. market-based medical system. You haven't got the votes for it. No, that's Which because means everybody has signed on. The, the, the benefit is baked in the cake. It is not going anywhere without you know, some sort of revolutionary change that we obviously aren't going to get based on that last vote. There's no way you get Obamacare reform without the president putting money into the insurance companies to keep premiums down. Is that pay, accurate? Pay me now or pay me later. And it's going to be much more efficient, frankly, sorry to say, to pay the insurance companies than going widely with subsidies the way they're talking about. This yeah. bus has left. The money's going to be spent, and we're going to have to pony up. And anybody who thinks we're not in the health care business as a federal government has been missing the last four or five years. Uh, Martha, Senator Sanders, he's talking about, well, he's actually going to introduce a single-payer situation. I mean, health, uh, Medicare for all, I think exactly. he's calling it. Um, how popular do you think that is in this day and age? I mean, I think the country's very divided on this, but I think it will be extremely popular with a lot of people. Um, you know, if they I look, never if thought it, I'd see this come. I, it, I mean, but, but we've been inching towards it at forever, you know, over the, the course of the past decade at least. So, and certainly with the onset of Obamacare. So he's saying, look, you know, this is a disaster. So if the government's going to pay for it anyway, why not do it through, through the Medicare plan? I, I mean, you know, Bernie Sanders is going to tap into something that is going to be very popular, I would imagine, with, you know, somewhere near 49, 48, 50 percent of the country. I don't know how you deal with it. You go, you go on the air at 7 o'clock at night, it's, all this stuff is happening, and you've got to make it clear what's going on. You do very well, by the way. Thank you, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> 7 o'clock on the we Fox News Channel. Yes, Good you to do. see you. It's good stuff. Thanks very much.